Okay. Good afternoon. We're good? Okay. Good afternoon. We're going to talk a little bit about an off-label product. If this were an official Nuvasiv meeting, which it's not, um, this, uh, I probably would not give this talk. So it's actually, there's an advantage here. But uh, we've, we've used the uh, precise nail um, off-label in the humerus, and I'm going to show you a little bit about my experience with that. So um, this is an example of a man who has seven centimeter um, limb length difference in the, in the humerus. And you can see the, the traditional treatment that we, we have done has been using an external fixator. Um, and it works very, very well. You get nice, long regenerate, and uh, you just have to keep the frame on for a period of time. And overall, I would say the experience was quite good. Elbow motion would get a little stiff temporarily, and uh, the shoulder motion would get a little stiff temporarily. But at the end, we recovered all of that. And we actually um, uh, published our experience in clinical orthopedics, and we had very, very good outcomes. But um, as we had access to the internal lengthening nail, it seemed logical to try to, do, to apply this to the humerus as well. And so I'm going to show you some examples. Here's a, this was my first patient. It's a girl related to a, um, uh, probably a bone cyst, and she ended up with a varus apex anterior deformity and some limb length difference. And we used the external, we used the internal lengthening nail. Um, you can see the marking the magnet. This is the distraction. Uh, just the same, same procedure that's done for the, for the leg. Now, um, we, we, did, we used a trochanteric entry nail, and sometimes you can come in lateral to the, um, to the rotator cuff, and you don't even have to really um, split the rotator cuff tendon. Uh, in other cases, you, you will split the rotator cuff tendon. But basically, you can see the, the lengthening. The biggest challenge is that it's, it tends to be a short bone, and so you have to use a short nail. Um, but this is how it progressed with uh, continued healing. Now, the advantage is that the shoulder motion and the elbow motion was better. Better. It was less compromised by the procedure. And ultimately, you can see the healing was excellent, and we took the rod out one year later. So we, uh, we were excited about this case, and so we published a case report uh, in, uh, in the literature. This was in, um, uh, this was in Journal of Pediatric Orthopedics. There was another case report that came out about the same time from, from the uh, Austrian group. And then we actually put together a, a multi-center study along with the people in Baltimore where we put together uh, a series of um, what was about five or six cases. And you know they, the, the cases that I'm going to show are, are quite representative of the group in the sense of the total amount of lengthening. But this is available, and you can read it. Um, you can see some of the data here, where the average lengthening was about five centimeters. Um, the consolidation index was 36 days. There were no complications. And range of motion was not affected. And the DASH scores, which was an upper extremity functional score, was improved. Um, so here's another example. Here's a, a patient with a bone cyst and shortening of the arm. Um, what we do, just to show you, we're, this is an AP and lateral. What, what I'm showing you here is that we, we get a picture of the contralateral upper extremity with magnification markers. So we have a good sense exactly from a radiographic point of view what the limb length discrepancy is. Um, in this case, there was no um, proximal humerus um, deformity. There was no varus deformity. And so we actually went through the rotator cuff, did a rotator cuff splitting incision, um, and inserted the nail. And again, this is a trochanteric nail, 8.5. You can see the magnet in place. You can see what I did here is I, I did the distal screw is very distal. So it's unlikely to um, um, be in the area of the radial nerve. And then the more proximal one was an anterior to posterior screw. Again, the entry site and the screws. Um, you can see the healing at the end of the distraction phase and into the consolidation. And this is what it looks like as it, as it went on to heal. Uh, this is the uh, pre-op and the post-op on this, on this kid, on this young man. You can see he, he actually started working out afterward. And his arms 
became more muscular. And uh, this just shows you, it reminds me to tell you that range of motion of the elbow and uh, radial nerve function was not a problem. Full extension, and this is what it looks like afterward. You can see we take, again, we take the nail out and you can see the nice remodeled bone healing. So correction of the deformity and, um, and lengthening achieved. Here's, a, um, here's another example of a, uh, of a patient and the analysis goes like that. I mean, we, we're, we're using the same type of analysis, the SNL, the shortest nail length. The location of the osteotomy, it's either gonna be at the apex of the deformity, if there's a deformity. If it's not, if there is no deformity, ideally it's, it's just beyond the deltoid um, uh, insertion site. So this was kind of, this was our, our location. So you see the osteotomy is 125, and then this is my, um, my desired amount of lengthening, and this is the, the part of the male, the, uh, the male part at the beginning, and then you can see 35. I told you that I like to have 50 millimeters in the distal segment, but because you're starting off with a short bone, you have to make some compromises. So here, the planning is such that you can predict that there will be about 35 millimeters at the end of the lengthening, right? And so you can see this is what, the, uh, what it looks like at the end of distraction. And as predicted, there's 35 millimeters of, of thick part of the nail in the distal segment at the end of the lengthening. And you can see progression of the, uh, of the healing. And this is the pre-op and this is the post-op. Now, uh, the last case I want to show you is um, uh, is an example of where there is a humeral head that is severely affected. So you can see this is the normal side to measure for length. This is the, this is the abnormal side uh, on this side over here. Now, again, same sort of thing. You look at the, you do your lengthening, you do your planning for your nail. And the, pro the challenge here is that you can see it's 170. This is a very, very short, um, and uh, very short distance, and the nail sizes have gotten smaller and smaller, but this girl had a, a limb length difference that was nine centimeters, 10 centimeters. And so it was impossible to do this in one stage. And so what you see here is, you know, we used the shortest nail that was available, and you can see by the locking configuration that this was a tibial nail. And so, um, we did this in two stages. That was stage one, and we got five centimeters from that one, which was the maximum stroke for that nail. And then you can see we went back, um, and, no, that's just showing progression of the healing, right, in the first osteotomy. And then we did an exchange nail once it got to a certain amount of healing, where we did a second osteotomy just proximal to the first one. And you can see additional lengthening, right, and so this part is the first lengthening, this is the second lengthening, and you can see the progression of healing of old lengthening and new lengthening. So overall, by doing it in a stage one, stage two, we were able to get up to 10 centimeters of, uh, of new bone and doing it in that kind of staged, in that kind of staged fashion. And um, her, her um, shoulder is an arthritic shoulder, and so actually what we did, and you can see this is the before and the afters. And what we did is when, when I went back to take out the nail, one of my uh, shoulder um, colleagues actually did, a, um, did an arthroplasty at the same time for her. So that's just a little uh, taste of our experience uh, in the humerus. Again, it's an off-label uh, indication for it, but the humerus bone um, uh, lengthens nicely and you really can use a a standard trochanteric or tibial nail in the, in the humerus as well. Um, the overall lengthening rate that I've been doing is about 0.25 three times per day, and you just have to be uh, cognizant of really two things. One is the rotator cuff insertion point, whether you're gonna go through the rotator cuff or you're gonna go lateral, and the second point is, is you have to be cognizant of the radial nerve distally, um, and so you have to be careful when you're putting in your distal interlocking screws. Thank you.